What's up guys and welcome back. In the previous session, we have created the database and initialized all the required services. Today, we are going to implement the register functionality. From the API, then we are going to test it via Postman and at the end we are going to implement it from the client side. So let's get started. First, let me create a folder in the API collect services so I'm going to create a class called uh, user services that going to contain all the required uh, functions to that we are going to use during this course let's create a class interface before call it i user service okay public and you can go to create a class called user service that's going to implement i user service that's nice you can directly create the class but uh, following this approach is better because uh, uh, maybe we have uh, login register functionality email confirmation but uh, with the multiple different implementations here we are going to use dependency uh, asp.net identity maybe you can use an uh, other sort of authentication rather than uh, JWT such as uh, uh, maybe OAuth or something else so before we create the functions let me create in the shared library two classes the first one called register view model. Okay, this class is the class that uh, that will represent the data transfer object that we are going to send from the client to the server. It's going to contain the properties and uh, attributes to validate them. So the property is going to be string email get set and public string password public string confirm password. That's what we need for this course. Okay, let's add the validation attributes. Let's required. We have to add reference for system component model dot annotations. Nice. Okay. And string length fifty maximum. And email address here. Let's add required string length maximum fifteen minimum. Five. Okay. The same for confirm password. This is our data transfer object. We are going to uh, create an object from it from the client, convert, serialize it into a JSON object, then transfer it to the API. Okay. The second class I'm going to create is the class that going to wrap the response I'm going to call it user manager response okay. Okay. it's going to contain a mes message message pool is success and Okay, that's enough for now. Or maybe we are going to make unusable string errors. So to return the errors if there is any. And yeah, uh, that's it. That's enough. Okay, 
save it. So this is going to handle the response that's going to be sent back to the user after he calls the register function. So the interface is going to contain a task because the function is going to be asynchronous functions. It's going to return user manager response. Okay. Add reference. We need you can add reference. Add dependencies. Add reference project and the choose shared. That's okay. Okay. Let's use this library. ASP.NET identity demo dot shared. Okay. I'm going to call it register user async. The parameter gonna be a register view model. Let's call it model. Okay, that's nice. Now let's create the implementation for that function public async task user manager response register user async register view model model. Okay. That's nice. First, let's check if the model is null, then through new null reference exception. Register model is null. Okay. Now, When we register the identity here, identity provides us with two classes. The first one called private user manager for identity user user manager. And in the constructor. configured the identity in the startup class identity registered this service in the dependency injection container so right now we injected it in this class user service so we can use it to manage everything related to our users we can create a new one uh, change password reset password and uh, it provides us with all the functions that we need to manipulate users Right now, in this function, we are going to use it to create a user. So, let's see. First, we create an identity user equals to new identity user. We set. We have all these properties we are going to set. Email equals to model email and username we are going to set it for email as well and um, what we need as well okay uh, that's it now we can use the function called create async to create a user we pass it an identity user with a password so it uh, creates that password and create our uh, that's user for us uh, before we proceed, let's just uh, validate the password if model.password not equal to model.confirm password, we can just return new user manager response message equals confirm password. Okay. 
Now everything is cool. Let's say var result equals to await user manager dot create async. This function takes an identity user. As an identity user as an argument and the password which is modal the password so it hashes this password and create that user with a password hashed now we can check if that user created successfully or no via result dot succeeded if not we are just going to return new user manager message user did not create sorry success equals to false then errors result dot errors dot select we are just going to take the description of each error so e e dot description uh -huh. uh, maybe the error gonna be like when uh, the same username repeated in the database or the th uh, the same email maybe the password is not uh, strength enough so there are multi sort of uh, errors okay if the result is succeeded, we can just return new user response message equals user created successfully and success equals true. Okay, that's it. Pretty simple, right? We don't need to take care of hashing password or make any complex things. Just create async and that's it. Right now, let's configure this class and register it in the dependency container here inside the configure services. Let's say services dot add school i user service service user service okay and that's it right now the this service is ready to inject in any class let's go to the controller and create add controller let's call it uh, API controller add let's call it both controller okay okay so right now we have created the controller called oath uh, first let's uh, inject an instance of I user service that we have registered in the dependency container call it user service and quick actions and refactors oh, okay ah oh, I cannot see it public of controller i user service user service Cool. Now let's create an action called register public async task i action result. This is going to return an action result. We are going to use the functions okay, bad request, uh, not found, etc. It's going to be called register. Register, okay. And it's going to take register view model. Okay, model. That's nice. Very cool. Now this is a, gonna be a post request. Add post. And call it 
register. So to access this function, I'm going to set the URL of the API slash API slash auth slash register. And I'm going to pass the body. Okay, from body. So it reads uh, the register view model object from the body of the post HTTP request. Okay, here first let's validate the model server side. I'm going to use the model state property dot is valid. If it's not valid, we are going to return bad request with uh, some properties are not valid. Bad request can return the status code status code 400, which means something wrong from the client side. Okay, if the object is valid now, we are going just to say var result equals await user service dot register user async. We are going to pass the model. So that's it. If the result dot is success equals true, then return OK and the result OK return the status code 200, which means the process has been proceeded successfully. And if not, we are going to return a bad request and return the result object as well. Okay, that's it. Pretty simple, right? Uh, what do we have here? Expect ah, nice. Yeah, Forget this. Okay, let's test that out. Okay, we're going to launch Postman. Postman. Okay, everything is up and running. Now, let's create a new request. Let's take the URL of the API. Okay. From here. Paste it here. Set the type of the request to post. Now, in the body, choose row text. Let's define we are going to send you a JSON object. Let's create Email. We are creating an object of type register view model. Okay. Info at mozaffo.net. Password. Password should contain at least a lowercase and it's gonna be at least five characters length and so I'm going to say ak.123 confirm password set it to ak.123 that's fine right before we send the request let's just set a breakpoint here okay 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 uh -huh. now let's set uh I forget api slash old slash register send okay we have received the request let's see the model oh, nice we have confirmed password everything's going great continue the execution okay sending the request 200 okay User created successfully, the sex is true, and we have no errors. Let's check our database. Mm. Okay, select star from ASP.NET users table. Okay, run very nice. Here we are. The first user have has been created successfully for us, and as you can see. ASP.NET identity took care of everything from the ID to the password hashing 
and email confirmed is set to zero, which means false. In a previous, in a future session, we are going to see how we can send a confirmation email to the user, and he can open a link. So he got it, uh, his email confirmed. That's nice. Server side, everything's working is working perfect, one hundred percent as expected. Let's go to the definition of this function. Here, after we create the user, we are going to say back to do comment send a confirmation email. Okay, that's nice. Right now, let's move to the client side to create very basic register form and implement what we have done from the client side okay let's go to this project okay let's go to references manage new packages and install mutant software json to serialize and deserialize register view model and the user manager response okay and let's add a reference to the shared project. Okay, cool. Now let's create a very basic window, register window, add new item, plant page, let's call it register window. Okay, nice. To extend the XAML a little bit. Okay, here, go to stack, panel, horizontal alignment, center, vertical alignment, center as well. A width going to be 300 point. Nice, needs to be, no, okay, 300. That's a text doc, text, create a new account. Okay, I want some, uh, okay, okay. Font size 35, horizontal element center, and margin 3. Okay, I'm going to remove the words here. So we're going to set the width automatically depends on its content. Now let's create two text boxes. Text box, give it a name, txt email, margin two, set a placeholder, email. Very nice. Let's copy that. Password box, txt password, margin placeholder password, finally at the bottom, give it a name, ptn register, margin to content, create account, set it in the center, horizontal alignment center. And let's create and click event handler, click new event handler. Okay, we are ready to write the logic of the client side. Go to the code behind file. Very nice. Okay, let's add async because to call the API, the method must be synchronous. Nice. First, let's create a an instance of HTTP client class client equals to HTTP client. This class provides us with all the functions to call the API to make post get put the electric words whatever. Now let's create an object of the register view model class of 
var modun it was new we just a few modun email equals to txt email dot text password password dot text password sorry and we need another password box txt confirm password placeholder confirm password that's nice confirm password txt confirm dot password now let's realize this object into a json string var json data equals json convert import mutants of the json dot serialize let's pass the model okay now we have our object as a json string let's make a post request first let's create the body of the request called var content equals new string content the string is json data encoding and the media type of the request is application slash slash json okay here we're gonna tell the server what is the type of the media or what is the type of the data that it uh, has in the body now let's send the request var response equals await client dot post async the URL okay let's bring the URL from postman Make it this way paste it here and let's pass the content that's nice now after we receive the request after we receive the response sorry we are going to read response body equals await response dot content dot read a string so right now we have this result let's deserialize it into a user manager uh, object var response object equals json convert the deserialize object to type user manager response and the, the JSON string is going to be response body very nice right now we have the request let's check if response object dot is success the request succeeded, then we are going to show the user a little dialog. Message. Hello. Import Windows Defender pop up. It's going to contain your account has been created successfully. Await dialog show async. Else, okay, repeat the same process, but here we can say something went wrong, or let's show the user the first error, not all the errors, but first or default. Okay, nice. Right now, let's make the register window the main window to when the application starts. Okay. We go here, window, main page to register. Okay. 
let's run the server. Let's run an instance of the Universal Windows 10 application. They about start a new instance. Okay, wow, well, we have this gentle UI. Let's test that. Account at test.com password ak.123 ak.123. Let's again set a breakpoint. In the old controller register action, okay, we already have it. Let's create account. Okay, oops, we have got an error. Which tell us the certificate authority is invalid or incorrect. Okay. Yeah, that's because uh, this is additional layer of security that Windows 10 applications adds when it send requests to a secured uh, endpoints but it is the certificate is invalid right now asp.net core uh, enables ssl for a self-signed certificate which is just authorized locally so to overcome the situation we have two solutions either we can add the certificate in the universal windows 10 application or we can just disable the ssl from the api which is the easiest we can Go to properties, debug, and just hit disable SSL. Enable, sorry, okay. Now uh, let's change the URL to the normal, not the, okay, here is the URL, the HTTP URL, not HTTPS, paste it here. Now let's try that out. Okay, again, info at test.com, ak.123, ak.123, head create. Very nice, we have received the request. The model, again, for test, okay. Continue execution. Your account has been created successfully. Congratulations. That was very nice. I'm uh, gonna upload the code on GitHub. You can find uh, the link in the description below. Uh, that was everything for today. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to put them in the comments section below. And in the next video, we are going to implement the login functionality. So, and generate the tokens, then send it to request some protected resources we will create. So thank you again, if you like the video don't forget to like, hit the like button and subscribe to stay up to date with everything new. Thank you and bye bye.